I'll just commence the proceedings this afternoon um, by welcoming Norman. It's really fantastic that he's been able to join us for this, the launch of the Autism Champions uh, Network. Um, and as you will have realised as you've gone around, we've got people in the room here today who've put, some people who've spent years improving autism services and improving the rights and opportunities of people with autism. We've also got people here who are new to the, to the whole uh, uh, campaign, really. And what we wanted to get from today was to share some of the experiences of the people who've been around a while and to get some of the enthusiasm of, of newer people joining us. Um, and I thought it would be good just to outline some of what we've been working on through the innovations funding. Um, first of all, uh, today is really about looking together at how we create autism-friendly environments. Environments that will give people with autism and their families the confidence to go out into their communities and use services that are there. And one of the points that was made in a meeting that I attended yesterday was there's a danger in this that if we're not careful, we focus on the, the, the opportunities of people who are more able to, to access mainstream services and lose sight of some of the people who need a lot of additional support to be able to access services and, and to live life as, as fruitfully as possible as part of their community. Um, what we have done is we've identified national, at national and local levels uh, companies and organisations who we can work with to raise awareness of autism, to encourage them to make reasonable adjustments, to ask them to commit to a charter. And the charter was written by John Simpson here and a group of his colleagues. So we, we were keen to have advocates, people on the spectrum, to write the charter and it covers key areas um, so that if an organisation signs up, they're signing up, in a, that they are agreeing really to have their staff um, trained, to have some awareness of autism, to make some adjustments to the environments of their workplaces, to change the way that they communicate or think about the way that they communicate so that people with autism can access their services to understand something about meltdowns in some of the situations that um, are, are so challenging, and to have employees who are able to come forward and say that they are on the spectrum and that they will support them and uh, make adjustments for them as well. So we have, in this first phase, identified about 100 companies we cannot say today that 100 companies have signed up, but what we can say is a significant number of major companies have taken our charter to their board um, to ask that they can sign up. Um, and we will provide to those companies, free of charge, some training to their staff so that they can promote awareness, make reasonable adjustments, and think about employing people who are on the spectrum. We've had some great support from other organisations, people in the room here from Dimensions. There are a range of autism organisations who've pitched in to help us with this. And I'm meeting in a hostelry, but I'll go no further. Uh, Mark Lever later today um, to, to see how we can work with the National Autistic Society in this project as well. It's time that we all got together to make a big drive on this. So the impact is that we've identified national organisations and we've looked at organisations in local neighbourhoods so that ultimately shops, restaurants, leisure facilities, doctors, dentists, walk-in centres, theatres, cinemas, etc. are accessible to people with autism. The opportunities that are lost on an annual basis are incredible. 26% of graduates with autism are unemployed, and I think it's about 4% in, in, the, in the general population. We've got people who are very employable, who are not getting access to work because they find it so difficult to go through job centres. So I recently had a meeting with Ian Duncan Smith, who's agreed £120,000 of funding to go alongside our innovations fund so that we can deliver training to and, and develop a champion in each of 750 job centres across the country. Um, and we can, help, we can keep in touch with those people and help them to develop uh, more accessible services, make reasonable adjustments 
in their local job centres. So really, um, the only other thing to mention is that we have a um, new website that's about to be launched. It provides information about just about every service for people with autism. It's free. Organisations can put information about their services onto the website so that it becomes a kind of yellow pages for people who want to access services that can look in their local communities and more broadly for services that are available in their area and it will link to the National Autistic Society website, it will link to the local offer from local authorities, it will link to CCG websites, etc. It provides really um, an online uh, chat, sent, chat rooms and support for parents, advocates and people with autism themselves and it's using the power of social media to um, share experiences and identify ways that we can work more effectively with people. The other thing it has is if people sign our charter, there is a um, small logo that can be displayed in the premises and a trip advisor function on the website. And that is our way really of gauging whether people have really signed the charter and are living by the, the content of it. So, um, there are 500,000 people with autism in the UK. If you look at the systems that are available and are there supposedly to support them, some of the critical problems arise because we have people in pivotal positions who require awareness training. We're aware of groups, GPs from the focus groups, sorry, sorry Carol, but the focus groups that we ran um, when we were working on the refresh of the autism strategy mentioned GPs, but also police officers, people in uh, leisure facilities, people at the, the gateway to a whole range of services. And we hope that through this local approach and national approach, we're able to provide some of that training. Um, I want people in this room to promote and champion our work, to use your networks, to use the context, contacts that you have and the expertise that you have to help us not just have a campaign, but to form a bit of a movement, to pull together for the first time all of the organisations. And I think Jane said, yes, it was 38,000 organisations who work in, in autism. Somebody quoted that figure yesterday, and I, th I think it's probably true. And if you think of the disparate activity of those groups, it's a shame if we can't come together and really push this. But similarly, if you look at the goodwill that we've encountered in just the eight weeks that we've been working on this initiative, it has been absolutely stunning. And we really should capitalise on that. And if we don't, really, we're, we're losing an opportunity for people with autism across the country. So please, in the conversations today, if you feel that you have networks or connections, if you have ideas, please, that's the purpose of today, to share them. There are people from the Alliance on each table who will take notes contact details or whatever. Um, so I hope you enjoy the event. I'm going to hand over to Norman now. Um, but please, as you, as you work through the day, you have not been randomly selected. <laughs> you have been picked for a reason. It would be good if you would use your best uh, connections and best labours to, to promote this whole campaign. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, John, very much indeed. And it's, uh, it's great to be here on this beautiful sunny day, and it sort of gives you a sense of optimism about life, even though we've got a general election around the corner, which doesn't always make me feel optimistic, but uh, uh, such is life. Um, but I think uh, so far as autism is concerned, we have a tremendous opportunity uh, now. Uh, first of all, I wanted to mention the event that took place yesterday. I understand there's a round table. I contributed a supportive comment to it. I, sadly, I wasn't able to be there. Uh, and I'm a, this, this focused on uh, the potential for research and uh, what we can achieve through raising awareness of the importance of research and what uh, we can achieve by doing the research uh, to uh, improve our understanding of these complex uh, conditions. 
Uh, and uh, Dame Stephanie Shirley, I, it's great that you're here today, and I know of the pivotal role that you have played in facilitating that research, uh, for which I'm enormously and personally very grateful. Uh, there's a fantastic opportunity there. Uh, but I think also there's an enormous opportunity with this uh, initiative as well. Um, and I think when you think about the experience of people with autism who are on the spectrum, I think things have improved uh, over the years, but there's such a long way to go. Uh, and when I heard John talking about the proportion of people uh, who are unemployed, who could be employed, uh, it's great incidentally to see Tom Blofeld uh, here, my uh, constituent from North Norfolk, and he and I have talked about the potential of uh, employment of people uh, on the autistic spectrum, often quite complex, but with such uh, a potential prize if you can uh, work your way through the challenges uh, that uh, present us uh, in such circumstances. The prize is enormous of giving people a life, uh, a good life, uh, uh, enabling them to be economically productive and to enjoy the sort of things that all the rest of us take uh, for granted. So a great, great opportunity uh, and I'm so grateful to all of you for uh, your pa participation uh, in this. Uh, and the uh, objective is to enable people to be fully part of their uh, communities and to make communities much more aware of autism. Uh, because, of course, people on the spectrum do all the things that we uh, the rest of us do. They go shopping, they use public transport, they go to the post office, they enjoy sport, and so on and so forth. So uh, you are already taking steps, very many of you, to make local areas more uh, autism friendly, uh, and I'm grateful for that. And by doing this, making adjustments, reasonable adjustments, to how services are provided, or to the layout of buildings, by involving people with autism, not operating in a paternalistic way, we know what's good for you, involving people as equal citizens uh, in determining their destiny, uh, we are moving towards a society which is fairer and more compassionate. Uh, this was the goal behind our update of the 2010 autism, adult autism strategy. It's called Think Autism, uh, and it's to create autism-friendly communities and to encourage a wider understanding and through this plan, uh, we are raising awareness of autism, helping to promote innovative local ideas uh, and make everyday places more autism friendly. Later this month, we'll be publishing statutory guidance for local authorities and for the NHS uh, to put the updated strategy into action. And we know that there is still a very long way to go with uh, uh, local authorities and the NHS uh, in achieving what we're after. But we now have 42 autism innovation projects underway. These projects are looking at early intervention, crisis prevention, supporting people to gain and grow their independence and helping them to find employment. The projects are wide ranging uh, and make full use of the latest technology. So uh, they range from training people in London with uh, Asperger syndrome to help their peers plan the support that they need and give advice, to supporting people in Stockport and Kingston via a 3D virtual world uh, with the aim of reducing isolation and promoting emotional well-being. But as I said at the start, we are still a long way away from where we need to get to, to get people into employment uh, and to support them to stay in employment. Businesses and corporations uh, have been enthusiastic about this idea, but, how, uh, 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 but can often be unsure of what day-to-day -day changes they meet, may, may need to make. Uh, and with your help, uh, we can achieve this change. Autism capital funding of three million pounds has been made available to local authorities to purchase equipment and new technology and for adapting public buildings uh, used by people with autism to make them more autism friendly. And I expect this funding to encourage local businesses to invest in their communities to make them more autism friendly. Uh, but it also depends on all of you. 
as people who are active in trying to bring awareness in your professional fields, your enthusiasm and your passion uh, will be key to changing behaviour. This is not something ultimately that can be achieved by ministers in Whitehall uh, sort of offering diktats to the country to do the right thing. It requires people in communities, in businesses, in public organisations to champion the cause and that's why this network it, uh, is going to be so critical uh, in changing culture and raising awareness. Uh, and that's why this is so uh, important. We need to keep building uh, the network to make it a truly national network of autism champions with representation across the whole country uh, and many different professional and business sectors. Only with a wide reach can we hope to make a true difference to the everyday lives of people with autism. Uh, you may have noticed last week that we published a green paper uh, on uh, people with learning disability, people with autism uh, and behaviour that challenges, and people with severe and enduring uh, mental ill health. Um, and it was driven by uh, what I have felt to be a failure of the system to change, um, despite commitments made, uh, to ensure that we give genuine power to people uh, to enable them to lead uh, a good life. Uh, too many people stuck in institutions unacceptably, uh, scandalously really, public money being spent inappropriately uh, on so-called care for people in inappropriate uh, circumstances. Uh, and I concluded after battling with a system that was refusing to change that we had to give more rights to people uh, and shift power away from institutions to individuals. Uh, and I've been really horrified over the last two and a half years to hear so many families talk about how they feel ignored, that no one listens to them, uh, that when they challenge decisions that are taken about their loved one, uh, that no one takes on board their challenge and business as usual just continues. That has to change. Uh, it's not acceptable uh, in this day and age that people in a way are treated as second class citizens. Progress has been made, but there's a hell of a long way to go. I want this to be a top priority for whoever is elected uh, in May. It's been an enormous privilege uh, to do this job, as you will understand, as a Liberal Democrat, I'm in the job rather unexpectedly. Uh, it's not part of the mindset to think you'll ever be a minister, but I've been driven by trying to achieve something of value uh, for people who uh, the system too often lets down. Uh, and I think this whole initiative presents us with a fantastic opportunity to make a real difference to people's lives, and I'm so grateful to you all for participating in it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.